Alright everybody, there's a giant wildfire in or around Fort McCurry in Alberta, Canada. Uh, this is around the northern Alberta oil sand city of Fort McCurry. Uh, it's been confirmed 80% of the homes in one neighborhood are gone. There's extensive damage to property in a number of other areas. Um, the regional municipality of Wood Buffalo says the Beacon Hill suburb in Southern End has suffered the most damage from the flames ripping through the city Tuesday afternoon, forcing an evacuation of almost 80,000 residents. I can't show you this today because my uh, computer is not allowing me for one reason or another to actually show uh, you, the uh, internet pages. I'm not even certain why. But that seems to be something it's not allowing me to do today. But I will post that you can see this. I'm getting this from globalnews.ca. So all those people in and around Alberta, we pray for you. Um, it lists a number of places that have been evacuated. Some loss and serious loss. Parsons Creek. Uh, Timberlea. Uh, I'll just I'll just go as this is um, a, as this map is actually saying it's affected uh, areas that have been evacuated are Parsons Creek, uh, Gregoire, Draper, Saline Creek, Prairie Creek. Uh, the places that have some loss are Timberlea, Dickinson's Field, uh, Thickwood, Downtown. And Grayling Terrace, the part that has serious losses as of May 4th, 1230, or Buffalo Woods, or Wood Buffalo, um, Avisand, Beacon Hill, uh, Centennial Trailer Park, and Waterways. Um, there is a legend here for five kilometers, which is three miles, and this thing looks like it has an affected area of nearly god I I want to say like 25 miles if not more there's current wildfire still burning at this point in Alberta Canada this is big long list of people are saying this might even be a terrorist attack of some sort because I can't imagine at this point in time it is that um, you know, the temperature is that way to where these woods have supposedly went up in flames. I know you guys are against this sort of thing, but I would definitely send anyone from the border states uh, using our National Guardsmen in the United States across country and I would definitely allow our guys with fire equipment to go help out in Alberta. I think it's necessary, and I would definitely, if I was even a governor of a state, I'd be contacting Alberta saying, hey, how do we get this done? So, I know you guys don't want to say, well, you know, we, we don't want your help or we don't need your guard, you know, your military here. Well, I wouldn't send them with guns. I'd send them with uh, fire and rescue trucks and stuff like that, you know. And I know there's a big deal between uh, the Canadian military hassling, uh, you know, uh, the American military. My nephew is in the Army. He's uh, over in Fort Drum. And from him, for him to go from New York to where his family lives in Michigan, it's a lot quicker to just go through Canada and come back around, but he has to fill out and do a whole list of things, and his uh, wife has to do a whole bunch of things just to, for them to travel through. So I know it would be a big thing to allow this, but I think it's something that should be done. I mean... This seems like it's it's huge, folks. I mean, we're talking 80,000 residents in evacuation of. I mean, that has to be at least 
35, 40 square miles. I mean, this is outrageous. So, everybody's in our prayers, folks. Uh, the Canadian press basically has put the maps together and everything that you're seeing. So, you can actually view those when you do. This is huge. This is actually probably world news because this fire is so big. But I imagine at this point they got at least 40% of it under control. Um, you know, you're in our prayers, guys. You need help, let us know. So, you know, thanks, guys.